Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is December the 12th, 2020. Let's talk football futures betting strategy. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I know certain teams right now are looking good, right? The Buffalo Bills, for example are looking good. But in my opinion, if you're looking to gain leverage in the NFL futures market and you've mapped it out and you want to have a team with high leverage where you can pick against them for profit, knowing that you have leverage on both sides of the play, then your way into the profit zone in the NFL playoffs, starts with the NFC East, right? Again, we're looking for leverage. We're not looking to pick favorites. This is the time of year where you just want teams, or at least a team, that's going to be in the playoffs. And you know you're going to have that with the winner of the NFC East. Whether you believe in them or not, this is a statistical play. So we're now in roughly the middle of December. Let's just name the odds here for some of these NFC East teams. And understand, their records are terrible, right? I just need for people to be conscious here. So you don't want to compare the New York Giants Two, teams like the Saints, the Chiefs, the Packers, the Steelers. What's the point in that? You want to compare them to the Washington football team, to the Dallas Cowboys, to the Eagles, because that's whom they're competing against to make the playoffs. So the Giants are going off right now at 66-1 to 1 to win it all. You want something on them. The Washington football team is going off at 80 to 1. 80 to 1. You want a little bit on them. You also want a little bit on the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, uh, by the way, they're going off at 250 to 1. And the Philadelphia Eagles. I know these teams have problems, right? Understood. Agreed. 100%. But the point here is that somebody is going to win the division. And when they do, you're in the playoffs. Let's go one step further, looking at that NFC East setup. Folks, there's a chance that a team like Tampa Bay, who's not going to win their division, right? There's a chance that a team like Tampa Bay will end up playing the winner of the NFC East. Again, map out scenarios for the playoffs. Now, Tampa is the type of team that you need to keep an eye on. Because if you look at the stats, if you go to footballoutsiders.com, and if you go to the estimated wins column, right, that's where they break out the stats and they look at the number of wins the team should have statistically based on their past performance this year. You're going to find out that Tampa, a 7-5 and five team, right, pretty modest, should have 8.9 wins. Right, 8.9 wins, which would place them fourth in the NFL. Fourth behind Kansas City at 9.9, the uh, Steelers at 9.1, and I'm missing the team that uh, would be in second place. Well, to make a long story short, just understand that, oh, New Orleans at 9.1. What, what I want people to do is to understand that you have teams right now 
that have performed better than their wins and losses, that in the playoffs, in the playoffs, would have a shot to beat the NFC Eastern team in the first round of the playoffs. So you're getting huge leverage today on Tampa Bay, right? A team that pro football out, excuse me, football outsiders is telling you is one of the better teams in the league. You're getting them at 14 to one, right? 14 to one. So think about it. If Tampa ends up playing the winner of the NFC East, the lowest odds you would get on any of those teams right now is the 14 to one that you'd be getting on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And even though the Bucs haven't been able to beat the Saints this year, understand with the Bucs, you still get Tom Brady with Mike Evans, with Antonio Brown, with Chris Godwin. Right? You're getting an elite Gronkowski. You're getting an elite passing game. Vets not rookies, guys with experience, some guys with Super Bowl rings, right? And you're getting a defense, according to Football Outsiders, that is ranked third in terms of defensive DVOA in the entire league, right? Think it through. Let's talk about some other teams that we're interested in and teams we're not. First, a team we're not interested in. I know Kyler Murray is a gamer. There's no question about it, right? He plays hard. I know statistically the Arizona Cardinals are in the top half of the league in terms of offensive DVOA and defensive DVOA. But Kyler Murray, the last few games, can't even get to five yards per attempt passing. Folks, he's undersized. He's banged up. He's not even running the football that much lately. Right now, we used to talk about how quarterbacks needed to have size to take the pounding in the National Football League. Then along comes Drew Brees. Then along comes Russell Wilson. And we seem to have forgotten that some guys are going to get beat up. Folks, you need to look long and hard at the quarterbacks of the teams that you're interested in. Right? You need to look long and hard at them. Right? Drew Brees beaten up this year, folks. You're looking at Taysom Hill right now. When Drew Brees comes back, understand he leaves with a lot of rib fractures. Right? Right? He had to leave, beaten up. Well, Kyler Murray doesn't have that option, does he? The NFC West is just too rough and tumble. The Rams right now are making noise. Seattle right now and Russell Wilson are making noise. Kyler Murray can't be Drew Brees. By the way, I'm guessing going forward, Arizona realizing that their quarterback is beaten up right now and can only play because of size. 12 games a year, they're going to go out and they're going to pick up a backup like a Taysom Hill or a Jameis Winston, which is what Sean Payton's been doing the last few years, hasn't he? Teddy Bridgewater, right? So I'm not bullish on Arizona. The quarterback position is too important in this league. Kyler Murray is too important to Arizona. And Kyler Murray right now is not Kyler Murray, is he? Right? Let me just say, too, just going down the line, you know, this is the time of year where Lamar Jackson fades, isn't it? Right? Lamar Jackson does not do well in the playoffs when teams have an opportunity to actually plan for a running quarterback 
who hits tight ends more than he hits wide receivers. So, this year, just ask yourself a simple question. Has Lamar Jackson progressed or has he regressed? Right? I know Baltimore has a nice defense. I know Baltimore's excellent on special teams. Do you trust the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC playoffs with teams like the Steelers out there? Understand, the Steelers are in the Ravens division. They know the Ravens. The Steelers happen to have the top-rated defensive DVOA in the league according to Football Outsiders. Not just the AFC, but the entire league. Right? Do you trust the Ravens when you have Kansas City out there? Kansas City, according to Football Outsiders, has the number one rated offense in the entire National Football League. Right? I would argue that Lamar Jackson has regressed, that the league has caught up to him somewhat, that he is devastating in the middle of a season when you've just played a traditional team the week before and suddenly you're playing the Ravens and Lamar Jackson is just too fluid, he's just too mobile, you're unprepared, your defense is designed to stop wide receivers, not tight ends. Right? And they run you over. Well, folks, that doesn't work. When you're in against a quick strike offensive team like Kansas City, and they would have to play KC in KC, right? When you're in against Pat Mahomes, and let's say you're down by 14 points, how do you come back when your quarterback can't hit wide receivers? Right? Let's be hard here. We're looking at the numbers, not the highlights. Looking at highlights, you see Lamar Jackson break through the middle of the line and he's gone for a touchdown running. And you say, my God, this guy's talented. Numerically, according to Football Outsiders, Baltimore is 21st in the National Football League an offensive DVOA, right? Let's be real, too. Certain teams are too unsettled at quarterback. Hey, maybe Jalen Hurst is going to give the Eagles the same kind of boost that Lamar Jackson gave Baltimore a few years ago. When Joe Flacco sat down, teams had geared up to face Joe Flacco, and then suddenly, here's Lamar Jackson, a mobile quarterback, and teams weren't ready. Right? But understand, Jalen Hurts is playing the Saints this week. Right? The Saints are one of the elite teams in the league defensively. In fact, the Saints, quite frankly, are elite across the board, top 10 in offense, defense, and special teams. More importantly, you look at the Saints. Taysom Hill is one of the more mobile quarterbacks. He's one of the better athletes at the quarterback position, right? In practice, don't you think the Saint defense has gone up against Taysom Hill, right? He's been with the team for years, folks. Don't you think the Saint defense has gone up against a mobile quarterback in practice and isn't going to be that dazzled by Jalen Hurts' mobility? Don't the Eagles have a more foundational problem? It's not like the quarterback hasn't been able to get the wide receivers to football. No, they have a deeper problem than that. It's that the wide receivers can't get open. They're lacking talent at the wide receiver position. Are you certain that changing the quarterback is going to change their fate? Let me just say this too. 
when you have a quarterback like Carson Wentz, who right now, by the way, has Philly's offensive DVOA at 29th in the league. In other words, folks, it hasn't worked in Philly this year. But when you have a guy like Carson Wentz, who was the first pick in the draft, who was on his way to winning an MVP, Philly Super Bowl year, before he got injured, shortly before the end of the season, right? When you have him, not an old guy like Joe Flacco, who you know lacks mobility, but a young hustler <coughs> <coughs> who's had success and who doesn't have elite wide receivers, right? Alshon Jeffries' prime is behind him, folks, if you haven't guessed already. Well, let me just say, do you really, this late in the season, and I know the division's up for grabs, but do you really change to Jalen Hurts? To me, and I have a lot of faith in Philly's coach, but to me, this reeks of dysfunction. This reeks of an uncertain culture in Philadelphia. This time of year where the games are important and playoff seeding, making the playoffs, are at stake, I try to stay away from teams that have a lot of dysfunction, right? So right here, while I'm, I have every team in the NFC East, I believe you need to have a little bit of a stake on Philly, right? When I'm hearing about quarterback changes and the incumbent quarterback doesn't have fractured ribs and is actually a younger guy than a Joe Flacco, I have concerns, right? To sum up this video, let me just say it's a mistake, in my opinion, to just look at the good teams here. What you want to prioritize is playoff positioning, right? Someone from the NFC East is going to be in the playoffs. Folks, you're getting outrageous odds. How are you getting 66 to 1 on the Giants with their trend line? I want people to look at what the Giants have done over the last five weeks. Right? Think about it. Washington beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Washington's defense. Washington's defense is excellent. Right? It's excellent. You're getting 80 to 1 on Washington. Now, I'll agree. Fans looking at the AFC are going to say, well, KC, Pittsburgh, they're a bunch of better teams, right? Fans looking at the NFC are going to say New Orleans, Green Bay, Rams, they're a bunch of better teams, right? The point I'm making to you is, yeah, but some team is going to come out of the NFC East. Right? Washington has already shown you the ability to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, haven't they? Right? Not only that, if I'm thinking about who they're going to play in the playoffs, then I think, you know what? Tampa might have the fifth seed. Well, folks, I'm getting Tampa at long odds. And, of course, Tampa... According to Football Outsiders, sixth in offensive DVOA league-wide, third in defensive DVOA league-wide. In terms of quarterbacks with Super Bowl experience, Super Bowl winning experience, oh, that's right, Tampa has Tom Brady. In terms of wide receiving core, oh, that's right, Tampa has Mike Evans. Look at his numbers. Tampa has Antonio Brown. Right? Tampa even has Gronk. Right? Understand, if things fall out a certain way, Tampa and the NFC East winner 
would get you into the second round of the playoffs with leverage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say this, and I don't say it lightly. Bill Belichick faced the Rams in the Super Bowl a few years ago. Well, recently, right? Jared Goff was the quarterback with the Rams. Experience is a great teacher. Belichick was confident going into that Super Bowl that he had the defensive setup to stop the Rams. And he did. It was a low-scoring game. Well, Belichick and company just played the Rams. Now, I'll agree. Several guys on the Patriots are taking the year off because of COVID-19, right? Some of the guys opted out. I'll agree with that, right? Cam Newton is the quarterback, not Tom Brady. I'll agree with that. But my point to you is that the Rams, who have an offensive DVOA of four in the entire league, who have a defensive DVOA of five in the entire league, who actually have a shutdown corner in Jalen Ramsey, who might be able to take out a Devontae Adams, for example, or a Mike Evans in the playoffs. The Rams were much better, much better this year against New England then they were in that Super Bowl. And understand, New England in this expanded playoff year was still in the running to make the playoffs. They needed this game. This wasn't a throwaway game. This wasn't New England thinking, well, we have the playoffs. Let's not show our full hand because we might face these guys in a Super Bowl. This wasn't that game. Now with Kyler Murray, I know the West looks cluttered right now. But with Kyler Murray beaten up, with Seattle's defense still looking subpar, right? Seattle's 22nd, according to Football Outsiders, in defensive DVOA. The Rams are fifth in the league, right? With Seattle having problems on defense, with there being questions all over the NFC, right? When I watch Green Bay games, I wonder what Aaron Rodgers would do without Devontae Adams, given the existence of shutdown corners like Jalen Ramsey out there. Right? Given the fact, oh, also New Orleans. Let's be real here. Drew Brees is so bagged up. Think about it. Drew Brees, a warrior. Right? Understand, he's been a smaller guy playing in a big man's league for years. When's the last time you saw Drew Brees go over to a coach and basically tell the coach, hey, player, I, I, I can't continue. I'm too banged up. As good as the Saints are, statistically, aren't you a little concerned? about Drew Brees' condition, right? Have we been lulled into ignoring the issue because last year, Teddy Bridgewater came in for him, Saints were still clicking, Drew Brees was clicking in the playoffs, up until that Minnesota game where he wasn't clicking, right? Aren't you a little concerned about the fact that Drew Brees banged up, Michael Thomas not looking like Michael Thomas, Right, the same offense not really clicking. Right, aren't you a little concerned? So, my point to you is Tampa, the Rams in the NFC, with the winner of the NFC East, those are all situations you have to look at. Don't you? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. By the way, I'm fading. Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, to me, has regressed this year. Right? This is the time of year where he has problems 
I haven't seen him hit enough wide receivers this year for me to be convinced that that team's in a good place. Let's face it, too. I know Cleveland has talent all over the place. I'll just put it to you this way. Their defensive DVOA is 19th in the league. 19th. They're missing Odell Beckham. Right? Their special teams, according to Football Outsiders, are 27th in the league. I know they have a good record. I know they're attracting a lot of money. I'm sorry. In the AFC, I still think it's the same as it ever was. Right? Teams you know. Kansas City. Reigning champion. Mike Tomlin has been to the Super Bowl with his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, multiple times. Right? I'll agree Indy and Buffalo deserve a look, but this is Phillip Rivers' first year in Indy. Let's be real here, right? Buffalo, I know they made the playoffs last year. I know Josh Allen looked spectacular this September, right? I just think it's still too early for a team like Buffalo to be competing against a team like Kansas City, who, last two years, made the AFC Championship game, lost to Tom Brady in OT, the following year, wins the Super Bowl. Right? I just think that that team, developmentally, and a Pittsburgh Steeler team that has vets who have Super Bowl rings, and that has an excellent defense, are just developmentally ahead of the Buffalo Bills right now, although I'll give the Bills a lot of credit, right? They're a threat, but they're a longer shot threat. Anyway, that's how I see it on December the 12th. Let's also be realistic here. As the games progress, we're going to adjust and change our rankings here. I personally thought the San Francisco 49ers would do a lot better than they're doing, right? As it is, they're in the top half of the league now, defensively. But their quarterback problems have taken them out of the mix, right? I was more bullish on Arizona when Kyler Murray was healthy, running the football, throwing for more yards per completion. Well, now he's not healthy. Now he's not running the football. Now that team is floundering a little bit, right? And so just understand, this is my view as of December the 12th. If the lay of the land changes between now and the end of the season, my views are going to change because the goal here isn't to be stubborn. The goal here is to make money. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.